The weather app that comes pre-installed on every iPhone has been redesigned and improved in iOS 15. We've got new background animations that better represent the weather at certain locations, a modular layout that can change based on conditions, precipitation notifications, along with temperature, precipitation, and air quality maps. As I swipe through the locations that I have saved, the background for each will adjust to reflect the current conditions there. According to Apple, there are thousands of variations for these animations. Depending on the conditions at each location, there may be a different piece of information presented first here. Right now in Boise, we're under a wind advisory. So that's presented at the top, followed by the hourly forecast. In Boston, it's raining and there's a flood warning. To see more details on the flood warning, just tap. Below that, the app lets us know how long to expect it to rain and how heavy the rain's going to be. Notice that I can also turn on notifications here. We're able to set notifications to occur just for our current location or for certain saved locations. As of now, notifications only work for locations in the United States, UK, and Ireland. With this on, I will be alerted when any precipitation is about to start or stop. To edit notification preferences, go into your saved locations list, then tap on the ellipsis button in the upper right. Here we have the precipitation map. Tap and it'll show an animation of the rain in Boston over the last couple hours and what's anticipated in the next hour. Tap done to return to the main page. Notice that over in Boise, since it's not raining, the temperature map is presented rather than precipitation. We can access these three maps anytime with a tap on the map button down here in the lower left. Switch between the three layers with this button. Tap and drag to move the map around, and use a two-finger spread or pinch to zoom in and out. We can quickly jump the focus of the map to one of our saved locations with a tap here. Scroll down for a 10-day forecast, and below that, more details are presented in widget-like boxes. We can't interact or move these information boxes, but they do clearly present a lot of information. So the catch with the built-in weather app from Apple is that it doesn't exist yet for iPad. We're still forced to find a third-party weather app to rely on or just use the weather widget on iPad. When using this, tapping on it will take us to the weather.com webpage. With the weather widget on iPhone, a tap will take us into the weather app. I continue to use the free weather channel app on my iPad, but there are a lot of options, such as Dark Sky, which is owned by Apple and will look and feel a lot like the new iPhone weather app. 